Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. I've always loved camping, ever since I was a little kid. Growing up, my family took trips to campgrounds every summer. As I got older, I started going solo or with friends. So when I found out about an abandoned campground deep in the woods about an hour from where I live, it sounded pretty cool to check it out. Supposedly it got shut down decades ago after some weird stuff happened there that freaked people out. My buddy said I was crazy to go camping there alone, but I shrugged it off. I figured how scary could it really be? Just some old spooky legends to attract curious folks like me. Famous last words. It was a sunny Saturday morning when I packed up my car with my tent, sleeping bag, and other gear. I was excited to get out of the city for a weekend as I headed out to find this mysterious abandoned spot. The hand-drawn map I had found online took me down winding back roads that seemed to stretch on forever. My poor old car was rattling so bad from the pitted dirt roads I thought it might shake apart before I got there. When I finally arrived and stepped out, there was no sound at all besides a faint breeze. No chirping birds or squirrels scurrying around like you'd normally hear at campground. The area was entirely overgrown with weeds taller than me and vines creeping everywhere. It was clear no one had set foot here in many, many years. The decaying picnic tables were faded gray and any signs or buildings had long since collapsed. It felt like I had stumbled onto the set of a zombie movie or something. Spooky for sure, but also kind of cool to have this whole place to myself. I found a small clearing and set up my tent and sleeping bag. I tried starting a fire, but the wood was all damp and moldy. As the sun started going down, the shadows got longer and an uneasy feeling came over me. I kept hearing odd noises coming from the dark wood surrounding the camp. Sticks cracking, leaves rustling. At one point I swore I heard a voice whispering out there, though it could have just been the wind playing tricks. Let's just say I didn't relax much as it got late. I hardly slept a wink. When I emerged in the morning to make some coffee, I saw my trash from the night before was torn open and shredded contents scattered everywhere. Definitely not a cute little raccoon's doing. It looked more like a coyo or wolf had gotten into it and gone to town. Even worse, my belongings appeared rummaged through while I slept. Clothes and gear strewn about, flashlight missing from my tent. It was really freaky. I kept yelling hello thinking maybe some vagrant person was lurking around messing with me, but only silence and echoes. That's when the worst part happened. As I was packing up, I caught a whiff of this godawful rotting stink like a dead animal. I followed it, kegging, and found the remains of a deer carcass just lying there torn open. Something about the way it was ripped apart and eaten it didn't seem natural. It looked almost ritualistic, making my stomach turn. I started imagining some deranged psycho killer living out here, mutilating animals. My heart raced as I realized I had to get out of there immediately. I basically threw everything in my car chaotically and peeled out so fast, my tires spat gravel everywhere. The whole drive home I kept checking the rearview mirror, half expecting to see some freak emerge from the woods after me. Once I got back to civilization, I finally started to relax a bit, but the chilling memories lingered, keeping me up all night. Of course when I told my buddies what happened, they didn't totally believe me. But when I looked up old news stories about that campground online, I found out some campers actually went missing back in the 50s. The only traces left behind were bloodstains and shredded tents. Definitely supernatural stuff going on. I always loved camping, but you couldn't pay me a million bucks to go spend another night in those creepy abandoned woods. The memories still give me goosebumps. All I can say is, some places are better left alone. We city folk don't know what kind of ancient evil and dark rituals take place deep in the untamed wilderness. My curiosity definitely got the best of me. Next time, I'll just stick to nice crowded campgrounds with showers and Wi-Fi, no twisted backstories. Let the ghosts and psychopaths keep their haunted forests. I'm good with roasting marshmallows safely in civilization. This little misadventure taught me to listen when locals warn you away from certain areas. Turns out sometimes creepy legends exist for a very good reason. I did end up doing more research later on the history of the campground because I couldn't get the creepy experience out of my head. Online, there wasn't a whole lot of info, but I found some old newspaper articles that had been digitized. 
apparently back in the 1950s, a few different campers disappeared within a couple weeks of each other. The only clues left behind were torn tents and traces of bloodstains on the ground. Then a local man at the time reported seeing evidence of strange occult rituals and symbols carved into the trees deeper in the surrounding forest. Of course, the police never publicly acknowledged any of this. It was chalked up to wild animal attacks. But the place was shut down soon after and eventually forgotten about over the decades, swallowed back up by the woods. I even tried contacting the local historical society to see if anyone had records about the area, but they didn't want to discuss it much. It seemed like they wanted the creepy history buried and forgotten. But to me, it proves some really dark paranormal stuff has been going on there for ages that we modern folk can't comprehend. There are forces in nature we can't explain, better left undisturbed. Needless to say, my days of venturing solo into remote abandoned campgrounds are over. It's too bad since I used to love getting out into the untamed wilderness, away from other people and signs of civilization. But clearly there are some malevolent energies in certain places that we humans were not meant to reckon with or understand. A healthy dose of fear and respect for the unknown is probably wise. At least now I've got a pretty killer ghost story to share around a campfire someday. Who needs horror movies when you've got the real life woods? Just hope all that ancient evil doesn't follow me home. My two close friends and I tried to go on a guy's camping trip together at least a few times over the summer months. It's been our annual tradition ever since high school to get away from the city and enjoy spending time out in nature for a weekend. We typically just camp at the same familiar place we've gone to for years, but this past summer we decided it would be adventurous to check out a new spot that we'd heard good things about located a few hours north. Seemed like a great idea at the time. We arrive on a Friday afternoon at the campgrounds after a long drive. It was pretty remote, surrounded entirely by dense woods as far as the eye could see. A few other groups of campers were scattered around the different sites, but overall there was a peaceful, quiet atmosphere. We picked out a nice private site to set up our tents on located near the back edge of the camping area, furthest from the main dirt path running through the middle. As we unloaded our SUV and started setting up the two tents, everything seemed perfectly normal and routine based on all our previous camping trips together. We bantered and joked around while getting a fire pit going and gathering logs for burning later after the sun went down. My friends got out our old portable propane camp stove to start cooking up some hot dogs for dinner as I carefully organized our other food and drink supplies. After we ate, we passed around beers while watching the glowing fire in comfortable silence, taking in the fresh pine-scented air. Overall, it was a pleasantly uneventful first evening on what was looking to be a classic fun guys weekend camping getaway. By the time it was fully dark, we were all feeling pretty exhausted between the long drive up and the work of setting up camp properly. We put out the fire and climbed into our respective tents fairly early, around 10 p.m. or so, ready to get a good night's rest. That's when the first slightly odd occurrence happened. As I was snug in my sleeping bag starting to drift off, through the thin nylon tent walls I faintly heard the echoing giggle of a child carry through the otherwise silent night air. I paused to listen more closely, but the laughter stopped abruptly. I assumed it must just be from kids at one of the neighboring campsites around us and thought nothing more of it before falling asleep. At some point later in the pitch black night, I was suddenly awakened by a loud during CRAC that seemed to come from the dense woods directly behind where we were camping. I bolted upright in alarm, my groggy mind trying to logically make sense of the abrupt noise. My first thought was that a tree branch or decaying trunk must have cracked and fallen somewhere out in the forest. However, the sharp S-Mac had sounded more like a firecracker or a gunshot piercing the calm night. I sat frozen still inside my dark tent, straining to hear anything else out of the ordinary over the ambient sounds of the wilderness and my friends sleeping soundly in the tent next to mine. But silence gradually returned, interrupted only by the occasional hoot of an owl. After remaining alert for a few more minutes, I finally convinced myself I must have imagined or embellished a loud crack due to being in an unfamiliar say. Eventually, exhaustion overtook me again, and I fell back into a light, restless sleep. When we all emerged from our tents the next morning, at first everything around the campsite appeared normal. The early dawn light was peeking through the trees, and we started going through our usual routine of getting some coffee brewing on the camp stove and discussing what to make for breakfast. However, as we all stood around chatting, I noticed my friend Evan had a strange expression on his face when he wandered back over from the far end of our site near the woods. 
He said he had just gone over there briefly to use the restroom in private, but clearly something was bothering him. Evan insisted the three of us follow him back over to the tree line so he could show us what he was talking about. And there, arranged neatly around the entire perimeter of our campsite, were dozens of small deliberate stacks of rocks and sticks, apparently placed in specific piles and formations. These odd miniature monuments definitely had not been scattered about the previous evening before we had all gone to bed. It was by far one of the strangest, eeriest, most inexplicable things I've ever laid eyes on. We all just stood there staring blankly for a few minutes, totally dumbfounded by the peculiar sight. The piles of rocks and sticks seemed to have been methodically constructed and positioned while we were asleep in our tents unaware. But who or what had done this during the night and why? The random symbols and cryptic patterns created by the rocks and sticks meant nothing discernible to us. The entire scene felt deeply ominous and sinister, like we had awoken to find the remains of some ancient pagan ritual conducted right under our noses. Needless to say, we mutually agreed without discussion to hastily take down camp and get out of those woods in record time. The long drive home was consumed with rehashing theories and trying to make sense of what we had witnessed. Had it just been some elaborate prank staged by a nearby camper to mess with us city boys, but that seemed unlikely given the sheer number of formations at our remote location. Some strange cult activity, perhaps, or maybe a territorial animal's nesting ritual. None of our attempts at logic could come close to explaining it. Once we were all safely back at home, we briefly considered reporting the bizarre incident to authorities, but ultimately decided against it since we didn't have any tangible proof besides our own unreliable memories. I tried doing some research online about the history of the campground, but found only vague references to other odd occurrences and unexplained activity reported there over the years. In the end, we made a pact to keep the whole eerie event to ourselves. However, I've never been fully able to shake the ominous foreboding feeling that lingered after awakening to those mysterious symbols and rock piles encircling our campsite. It still raises the hairs on my neck to think back on it today. Needless to say, we never returned to camp at those particular grounds again, instead sticking to more familiar locals closer to home. I learned you'd never know what malevolent energy could be lurking within nature's calm exterior. Sometimes it's better not to venture outside your normal comfort zone. Our human minds simply can't comprehend all the unknown forces at play in the wilderness, and perhaps that's for the best. I'm just grateful we all made it home safely with only a lingering sense of unease. An important lesson that the forest is not always as peaceful as it appears. Camping has always been one of my favorite ways to relax and reset out in nature, away from the stress of everyday life. After not getting out much last year, I was really excited to go on a solo camping trip this past fall at a beautiful state park a few hours from where I live. I booked a remote campsite, packed up my car, and hit the road ready for some peaceful solitude surrounded just by the woods and wildlife. Little did I know the weekend would take an unsettling turn I still can't get out of my head. I pulled up to my isolated campsite late Friday afternoon. It was perfect set away from the main section of the campgrounds and encircled by towering pines and a babbling stream. After setting up my modest tent and supplies, I spent the evening reading by the fire, taking in the stars and enjoying being offline. I relished the silence, interrupted only occasionally by the sounds of insects or an owl hooting. By the time it was fully dark, I was exhausted between the long drive and hiking around my site. I put out my fire, climbed into my cozy sleeping bag and drifted off quickly. But at some point during the night, I had an extremely vivid, creepy dream. In it, I woke up inside my dark tent, everything seeming normal. But I couldn't shake the feeling someone, or something, was lurking directly outside my tent watching me. I had the unnerving sense that if I peered out, I would meet the eyes of something not human. I tossed and turned, hearing what is like rustling and strange grunts muffled outside the thin nylon tent walls. In the dream, I froze as the distinct silhouette of a crouched figure seemed to move along the tent perimeter, as if carefully inspecting it for an entry point while assuming I was asleep inside unaware. I sat paralyzed in fearful silence, unable to call out or make any movement that would alert it to my consciousness. Its shadow slowly encircled the tent before pausing at the front door flap, lingering there for what felt like eternity. The only thing separating us was a thin barrier of nylon. Just as the being started to claw at the tent entrance, I was jolted awake, finding myself soaked in anxious sweat. I sat straight up, breathing heavily. 
Bright morning sunshine streamed through the mesh roof bend above me as birds chirped, your typical idyllic morning in the woods. The vivid dream already started fragmenting in my mind. After catching my breath and taking a few sips of water, I convinced myself it was nothing more than a silly nightmare. Probably just my overactive imagination amplified by unfamiliar surroundings. To shake off the residual creaked out feeling, I decided to get up and start my day rather than trying to go back to sleep. I remember pausing to stretch and rub my eyes after sitting up in the cramped tent. That's when I heard it, the unmistakable crackling snap of a leaf or twig from right outside my tent flap. My blood ran cold. Then I detected hurried scuffling footsteps moving away like something had been startled and was retreating into the surrounding brush. I sat petrified, unsure if I was still stuck in a night terror or awake. The sounds of snapping twigs faded until the forest was silent again, save for my thudding heart. I waited a few agonizing minutes before working with the courage to slowly unzip the tent door. Peering outside, I expected to come face to face with a menacing intruder, but nothing was there. No tracks, no blood, no signs of any creature. The sight was undisturbed. It must have just been a squirrel foraging around, I rationalized. Nonetheless, I felt deeply unsettled. I kept glancing around all morning as I made coffee over my camp stove, feeling like I was being watched from the shadowy woods. Every little sound put me on high alert. I tried to tell myself I was overreacting because of a silly dream, but I just couldn't shake the sinister presence I felt lurking somewhere beyond my vision. The way the scuffling footsteps had retreated so hurriedly kept replaying in my mind. By noon, I had packed up camp earlier than planned, too rattled to spend another night alone at that site. As I drove away, I couldn't help but watch the tree line for anything peering out at the departure of their prey. Logically, I know it must have been residual paranoia from the nightmare mingling with natural animal sounds. Yet deep down, the lingering uneasy feeling that something wanted me to leave the forest remains to this day. I still love camping, but choose less remote sites these days where other tents are visible nearby. Call me overly cautious, but since that trip, I refuse to write off any odd apprehension as just my imagination. Our primal instincts evolve for a reason. We modern humans underestimate our own peril just how thin the veil is between civilization and unknown. There are ancient wonders and horrors lurking in the untamed wilderness that defy reason. My uneventful nights camping only reinforce how extraordinarily sinister that one experience felt. In hindsight, Perhaps my dream was some deeper omen from my psyche warning me that my presence was unwelcome in those dark woods. A chill runs down my spine, even now recalling the potent sensation of being watched, followed by those panicked footsteps receding into the underbrush. This is one camping trip that will leave me grateful to be within the relative safety of four walls. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like, and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.